The principle of emphasis describes how an artist draws our attention to a specific area of the composition. There are many ways that an artist can create emphasis in a composition, from positioning, to contrast, to color intensity, to size. In this drawing by Degas, the area of emphasis is the general trapezoidal shape that includes all of the horses and their riders. When an area of emphasis concentrates on a specific spot or figure, we call that spot or figure the focal point. The focal point is usually what the artist considers to be the most important thing in a composition. As I described in the discussion on balance, the focal point in this drawing is the horse on the right hand side. Again, it is the largest form, it has been pushed to the edge of the composition, its level of detail is more complex than the other horses, and its colors are the most saturated. Using the principle of subordination is how an artist creates areas of lesser interest so that we are not distracted from the areas of emphasis. The area that's subordinate is usually on the peripheries of what is emphasized. Compared to what is emphasized, something subordinate is generally smaller in size, it's often pushed to the corners of a composition, and it usually has a more muted color palette. In Degas' drawing, the area that's subordinate is all of the space that is not occupied by the horses and jockeys. This includes the muted blues of the sky and the muted greens of the field. The principle of directional forces, or directional lines, are one way that an artist can use emphasis to lead our eyes through a composition. You can think of directional lines as paths for our eyes to follow that are embedded in the composition. These paths can be created by using actual or implied lines. With contour line drawings, the artist uses actual lines to lead us through the composition. In this drawing by David Hockney, the artist uses a number of actual lines to lead us from the open right side of the composition to the left edge and back to the focal point of the sleeping man's head. When actual lines are not present, implied lines can be used to create directional forces. In the case of Degas' jockeys, an implied line can be created by connecting the points of the horse's hooves. Another implied line can be created through the points of the jockey's heads, and other lines can be created by connecting other points in the composition. As these implied lines illustrate, Degas leads our eyes from the right edge of the composition to the specific point of the top left corner. As you remember from the lecture on line, uh, implied line can also be created through a series of gestures. The figures in this, in this painting by Nicolas Poussin use hand gestures and gazes to point our attention to the inscription on the tomb in the center of the composition. The more dynamic the directional lines, the greater the impl implication of movement. As with the painting by Poussin, lines can reference the intended movement of the viewer's eyes through the composition. In the case of this drawing by the Spanish artist Francisco Goya, the implied movement created through line can reference the physical action being depicted. The actual line of the matador's vertical pole is one of the most prominent directional forces in the composition. This pole is meant to serve as a sort of anchor. It creates a visual tension that we know must be broken once the action continues. Another major directional force is created by the implied line that cuts through the axis of the matador's body and through the hind legs of the bull, effectively cutting the composition in half at a diagonal. Many other directional lines can be drawn from the shadow cutting across the arena wall to the axis of the lunging bull to the actual lines of the arena walls. If one were to find all of the directional forces in this image, the dynamism of the composition becomes quite apparent.